So I'm back here on the outskirts of downtown SF and I decided to do something I, I've never done. I've always seen all these videos online of people shooting a hyperlapse with the drone. I've done the hyperlapse, but what I haven't done is saved the waypoints in the DJI Fly app and repeated the same hyperlapse, maybe for like a day to night type of sequence. So I just got done shooting my first hyperlapse when the sun was setting over downtown. It looked amazing. And now the next step is to probably wait. I think I'm gonna wait probably a good 15, 20 minutes for more of the skyline to light up. And then I think that's the shot I'm trying to get. Then I'll repeat the same exact hyperlapse. Then I'll be able to blend them together. Hopefully I'll be able to blend them together if it's not too windy. This should work out. As long as it's not too windy up there, I didn't notice the drone really moving around too much. It seemed pretty solid, but it's a little windy down here on the ground, so we'll just have to wait and see later when we get the hyperlapse on the computer. Either way, looks super amazing. Got great video, got great photos. Let's uh, wait this out and get another hyperlapse in. This is a screen recording from my iPhone 11 that I shot while doing the first hyperlapse. I wanted to show you what it looked like while flying in the DJI Fly app. I also wanted to show you the camera settings for the first shot. It took about 13 and a half minutes to shoot 350 photos with a two second interval between photos, which will give me a little over 14 seconds when processed into the video. Video synthesis completed. Here's the stabilized hyperlapse MP4 that the Air 2S automatically creates for you. It might have been a little too windy for hyperlapse this day, but I still think I can do something cool with it. And here's the reason why you should always shoot raw DNG and process your own hyperlapse. On the left is the heavily cropped MP4 from the Air 2S. And on the right is my version that was edited in Lightroom and LR time-lapse. When I play both clips side by side, you can easily see the advantages of processing hyperlapse yourself. Especially later in the clip as it gets darker out, the MP4 on the left is underexposed for most of the clip. On the right, I was able to brighten the overall image and recover the shadows in post pretty easily. Time to set up the second hyperlapse. First I select hyperlapse, then waypoints from the menu. Click the little down arrow next to where it says set waypoint. Next, I press the little box on the top left and then choose the saved hyperlapse that I had set up earlier in the day. Two second interval is gonna work perfectly for this. I pretty much always use the two second interval. I just like to have the extra frames and I can always speed it up later in post if I want. All I have to do now is change the length of the clip to 14 seconds so it'll match my first hyperlapse and we're off. The aircraft is heading to the first waypoint. I like to fly the drone out to the first waypoint, or at least as close to the first waypoint as I can get it. And then I'll go in and set up the hyperlapse. That way it doesn't take as long to get into position, which will help save time and battery life. Looks like it's found its way to the first waypoint. Now it will turn and face the skyline. And then it starts the hyperlapse. Do any of you get annoyed with the scrolling tips that are on the screen? I really feel like they should give you the option to turn it off. 
I definitely trust that my Air 2S is safely doing its thing during a hyperlapse, but I always end up looking at the screen when it says something like, battery is overheating or positioning is unstable and a collision risk and creep and a bunch of other shit that makes you worry for a split second that something's possibly going wrong. Leave a comment below if you hate the tips or let me know if you find them useful. Jumping into DaVinci Resolve 17, here you can see I have both of the hyperlapse in a 4K timeline. Both have already been stabilized here in DaVinci. As I scrub through these clips, you can see that at the beginning of the hyperlapse, they kind of orbit a little bit, and it's not just moving from the left to the right like I had set it up to do. I'm not sure if it was because of the wind or something I had done when I set up the hyperlapse waypoints originally. I'm going to trim both of these clips a little bit shorter to eliminate that rotation. I'm just going to play with the opacity of the top clip so that I can see how much the clips are actually off from each other. It looks like this first one is off quite a bit. You can see the buildings and the skyline or the crane in the foreground don't really match up, which shouldn't be a problem. I'm going to show you in a second how you can fix that. First thing I'm going to do is zoom in on both clips. That way I'll have a little bit of wiggle room to move them around and try to match them up a little bit better. Next, I'm going to do a little bit of keyframing. I'll set some keyframes at the beginning and end of both of the clips. I'm going to adjust the top clip and slide it over to the right so that the buildings line up a little bit better. Moving on here to the end of the clip, you can see that the buildings are off again, so I'm going to go up and set my keyframes for the end, and I will select the bottom clip this time. I'm actually going to slide that clip over a little bit to the left so that the buildings match up again. When I adjust the opacity here at the end, you can now see that the end of the clip matches up. Now I should be able to add a nice dissolve in between the middle of these two clips. Next, I'm just going to kind of look through both of the clips and scrub around and see where I want the transition to go exactly. I think I like it a little bit earlier in the clip. Since the clips are so long, I probably won't end up using most of the clips anyway. I think somewhere about here looks good. And this is all just personal preference. You can make the transition happen later in the clip or earlier if you want. You can see that I picked a pretty good spot for the transition to go. Both of the clips line up really well, and I think that'll make the transition go a little bit smoother. There isn't too much left to do now, but drop in the cross dissolves. For something like this, you're going to want to keep it a little bit shorter so that transition from the first clip to the second clip goes by pretty quickly and doesn't give you time to really notice the differences in the two clips. I think I'm done, and the only thing left to do is play the final clip. That's it for the video. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch it all the way to the end. Please consider hitting the subscribe button down below, so that way you'll stay up to date when I upload new videos.